Hey, this is Chris Plush from CG Masters, and in the second part of this tutorial series, what we're going to do is UV unwrap our low poly knife here. So now let's press 2 on the number row to go to the second layer with all of our low poly objects. And I'll right click on the handle to select that. We'll start with this first. And let's press forward slash on the numpad to go into local view and isolate this. Now, since this is a cylindrical object, we're going to need to add some seams down the sides in order to tell Blender that's where we want this cut up when we go to unwrap it. So let's tab into edit mode. And the first thing I'll do is add an extra face up top because a little bit of a ledge up top there is going to be visible underneath the handguard. So let me select those two vertices and I'll press F to create just one face there. All right, so now let's get started adding in some seams. Let's switch over to edge select mode to do this. So down in the 3D header right there, let's click on that icon to enable edge select. And let's hold Alt and right click on that edge right there. And it selects the loop all the way around the knife handle. We don't want this bottom piece here to be split in half. So I'm going to hold Shift right click on that to deselect it. But I do want to separate the entire bottom panel. So let's hold Alt and Shift, right click on that edge, it'll select all the way over to halfway. And we'll do the same thing on the other side, hold Alt and Shift, right click on that. So that whole bottom rim is selected. And let's go up to the top here. And let me hold Shift, I'll right click on that edge, and that one as well. Because this tab at the top there, I want that just to be able to flip up. So we're going to make two cuts on the sides right there, so that it can easily just unfold. All right, I think that's it. So with all those edges selected, I'll press Control and E and click on Mark Seam. And all of those edges will turn red for us. Now right now we have a mirror modifier active, so when we go to unwrap this, it's only going to unwrap half of it, and all of that detail in the textures will be mirrored to the other side. I don't want that. I want to be able to texture each side differently. So what I'll do is tab out of edit mode. I'll click on Apply for the mirror modifier, and then let's tab back in. Now let me press A once or twice until everything is selected. And let's split the window. So I'll go up to the top right, left click there and drag it to the left. And now let's change the right side window to the UV image editor. And let's UV unwrap these just to make sure everything looks good. So let's press U for the unwrap menu and just simply select unwrap. And Blender will calculate the unwrapping based on where we've placed our seams. You can see we have two halves of the handle and our tabs at the top unfolded perfectly because of those two cuts up there and then we have our panel on the bottom of the handle. So everything looks like it unwrapped perfectly. So we're done with this for now. So now we can tab out of edit mode and I'll press forward slash on the numpad to go back to global view. And now let's right click on the handguard to select that. And then I'll press forward slash on the numpad to go into local view. So now let's get to work unwrapping this. Now we actually have a few modifiers active for this. So we're gonna need to apply all of these. Let me just drag that over real quick. And let me zoom into one of the corners here. So I'll click on apply for the mirror modifier and I'll click on apply for the solidify modifier. And for the bevel modifier, I don't think we need to keep the segment number that high. I don't want it to be completely flat. I would like a little bit of bevel like that. So I just turn the segments down to one and then click on apply for that. And now let's tab into edit mode and let's see where we want to place a seam for this. Since it's an enclosed object, we obviously have to split this in half in some manner. So what I'll do is just hold alt, right click on that edge loop right there, selects it all the way around then I'll press Control and E and mark that as a seam. And let me press A once or twice to select everything. Then I'll press U and choose Unwrap just to see, just to make sure that everything unwrapped cleanly. And yeah, that looks good. All right, so that does it for that, for that piece. So I'll tab out of edit mode and I'll press forward slash on the numpad to go back to global view. And now we'll work on the knife blade. Now let's go over to the modifiers and click on apply for the mirror modifier right away. And let's tab into edit mode. What we're going to do first is just split this into two halves with a seam right down the middle. So let me hold Alt, right click on that edge right there, and it selects the edge loop all the way around in the center. But it doesn't go all the way down in this area here. If we were to select that as well, it's not going to unwrap as well because we have this kind of boxy area right here. And what we really need to do is just create some seams around this there so it acts as an extra tab that just unfolds cleanly. So let me deselect that and let me hold Shift. I'll select that edge, that one, and that one. So that'll make it part of a tab on this side of the knife, and it's just gonna unfold along this edge right here. So with all of these edges selected, I'll press Control and E and choose Mark Seam. And let's see if that unwrapped well. So I'll press A once or twice to select everything, then press U and select Unwrap. Now the only issue you might be curious about is how it starts to slant as it gets to the bottom of the knife here. And it's doing that because we left this triangle as part of the main UV island. Now that triangle is this piece right here. We could separate that and then we'd get straighter faces down here, but if we separated these triangle areas into their own floating islands up here, 
they're going to occupy very little texture space and that might cause some issues with some visual seams. So I thought it was best to just keep them connected so that the textures can go seamlessly all the way through the area without any, any separations. Now one of the goals of UV unwrapping is to make sure you have as minimal amount of stretching as possible. So in order to make sure that our UV unwrap here is as minimally stretched as we could get it, let's press the end key for the right side toolbar and enable the option called stretch. And this is going to give us a visual indication of any UVs that might be really stretched out to the point that they're going to distort the textures. Now this solid blue here indicates that there's no stretching whatsoever in the area. But for example, if I were to take that UV, bring it down like that, you can see that because this UV is not the, the same shape as the actual face on the model, it's indicating with this vibrant green that there's going to be very serious stretching and texture distortion. So let me undo that. And you can see in this area up here, we might have like a slight light blue tint there indicating a minimal amount of stretching, but overall I think everything looks great and I think the texture is gonna be applied to this very well. So now all we need to do is just to take all of our UVs and put them all together into one UV map. So let me bring back our 3D view a little bit. Come on, man. Oh, I get so discouraged when I can't click on that boundary. Now I know there's add-ons you can use to UV unwrap multiple objects at the same time and put all of the UVs together onto one UV space, but we're just gonna do things manually and cruise right on through. So I'll press tab to get out of edit mode. Press A twice to select everything and press Control and J to join everything together into one mesh. Now we can press tab to go into edit mode and we have access to all the vertices. So make sure everything is selected, then press U and select unwrap. And that'll UV unwrap everything onto the same UV map for us. And then we press Control and up to go into full screen. And most importantly, it UV unwrapped everything proportionally to each other. So that's gonna make sure that our texture detail is consistent throughout the model. So now we just need to space everything out a little bit better, give these islands some room to breathe. So I'll press A twice to select everything, and I'm gonna stand everything up just cause I'd rather look at it like that. So I'll press R to rotate, hold control and rotate it 90 degrees and then left click. And now let's press L while hovered over that island of UVs right there. And I'll press G to move it down and next to the other island with a little bit of room next to it. And then hold shift and L over that island right there to select both. I'll press G and I'll move them up and out of the way like that for now. Now let's press L over the knife island, press G and then X, move it to the end there. And then we'll do the same thing for each island next to it, leaving a little bit of space in between each one as we go. And now we'll select that, move it up and over there. We'll select that, hold shift and press L over that. And press R to rotate, hold control and rotate it 90 degrees. And then we'll drop that right there and we are done. So let me press control and up to get out of full screen. And we actually want each of these objects to be separate. It's just gonna be easier when we go to bake normal maps for it. So what I'll do is press the P key and separate all by loose parts. And now we have our three objects again. And each one maintains its spot in that UV map. And we are good to go. All right, so that's actually gonna do it for this video. That's all there is to the UV unwrapping part of this. In the next video, we're gonna be baking the normal maps and we might be doing the other textures as well. I'm not entirely sure. But if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for new videos every weekend. So until the next one, I'll see you around.